Hmm. Welcome, stranger. It's been a while, two months, I think. I've been uh, working on cameras that uh, people wanted ready for Christmas and um, got those out. And anyway, I decided here in January it might be time to make a uh, video. I'm working on a uh, Nicromat uh, FT2 that has a problem that I've seen quite often in the past, and I thought I would um, pass this uh, information on to uh, viewers that are interested in... Uh, what does it be called? Do-it-yourself? <laughs> Camera repair. Anyway, let's get started. This is the top cover that was sent with the uh, camera the customer sent me. And I uh, hit the camera. Great. And um, what I want to show you is that um, quite often when a uh, eBay, they uh, just take pictures of the camera, they show a front view. And the camera looks pretty good. You don't see any dings at the corners. And you think, well, yeah, that, uh, that camera might clean up and might make a good candidate for um, what, uh, do-it-yourself job, get it going. But then when you get the camera, you notice that um, they didn't show you the back. And what happened is, is the customer or whoever the owner was, previous owner, dropped it on the flash shoe. I don't know how they do that. I've seen literally hundreds and hundreds of cameras and the flash shoe is dropped. And if you look at my um, tweezers here, you can see it's kind of at an angle where it was smashed in and it was cracked here and uh, over here. And you can see it's kind of bulging out. It can't be fixed. I've tried. The uh, viewfinder is... Um, crimped in and uh, I've tried getting using a hammer to crimp them back but they don't work they fit loosely and uh, the only way I found to fix it if, if I wanted to would be to remove the crimp with the Dremel tool and use the epoxy and epoxy it back in but I don't like doing that because I've tried to flatten this out and you cannot flatten it out no matter how you try not only got to flatten it out, you got to push this um, flash shoe up and level it. And again, it's nearly impossible. The um, This is the uh, top cover I replaced it with. And as you can see, or hopefully you can see, look at the, uh, I'm having a little trouble here holding them both. If you look at this line here, across here and down here, and if you'll look here and over the top and here over the top, you'll see it's sticking out or it's been mashed out, I guess you would say. And um, it can, you know, I've tried. I spent a half a day trying to uh, fix it. It happens on all SLRs, by the way. Nikons, uh, Minolta's, Olympus, all of them, they, when they, uh, the customer drops it, it hits the flash shoe, and it mashes out the uh, viewfinder. You can see here it's been bent out. It's one thing you want to always watch for when you buy a, a camera on uh, eBay. You need that uh, rear view. This crud here, as bad as it looks, about nine of the ten cameras I get in look like that. And I clean them up. This one here was all cruddy too. And uh, I cleaned it up. Takes about an hour to uh, clean one up using, uh, oh, I use sometimes use a degreaser called 409. Sometimes I use naphtha. Sometimes I use alcohol. I just, uh, I test the areas with different cleaners and uh, find out which one works best on that particular camera because you never really know what's um, cost it. You don't know if it's rust or if it's um, oil from the fingers or you watch, you just don't know. So you have to try different cleaners to find one. This one has um, some dings right up here at the top. But yet it looks a lot better than the uh, other one, which is here. And uh, like I said, uh, or may not have said, it's crimped. 
And uh, once it's, uh, sometimes it gets knocked out. And uh, the only way to put it back in is to, to get a Dremel tool, remove the crimp, use epoxy, and glue it back in. I don't like doing it because you have to consider, well, what knocked it out to begin with? What knocked it out to begin with was a blow from the top. That's what causes it to come out if it comes out. This one didn't, but quite often it does. But it can be, if the camera has sentimental value and the customer wants the original top, I can remove the crimp and epoxy it back in. Of course, if I did, I would clean it up. And I would try the best I can. I would remove the uh, um, bracket here that holds in the uh, flash shoe and uh, knock the top up a little bit, put the flash shoe back on, and try to make it level again across here from the top. So one side is not knocked down. But um, that's main uh, reason for this video is to show you that uh, when you're buying a camera, I think I'll go to the other camera. When you're going, buying a camera off eBay and they show the camera like this, which they most often do, and it looks good and you see no dings along the edges and you think it's a good camera, make sure that you also get to see the back to make sure that uh, it hasn't been dropped and that uh, there's no bending right here. So now we move on to, um, let's call it part two of this video. And that is missing screws. Switching back and forth. One's missing here and one's missing here. That's the way the camera came to me. When I take a camera apart and I remove the top cover, this is the first thing I always check is the flash shoe screws. Back in the 80s, I seems like I saw hundreds of these cameras and uh, these screws would work their way loose and fall down into the camera and lock it up. The way they're positioned, they're upside down, and so if they got loose at all, they'd immediately start backing out until they fell on the camera. The better companies would put a red sealer on all four of these to prevent that. So that, uh, that helped. But uh, even the ones with red seals, I've seen them missing at least one. The way it happens is the customer uses the flash shoe a lot. It uh, moves a little bit. And uh, eventually, it, these start working loose. They only have to get loose a little bit and they'll start backing out. On uh, this particular camera, when uh, the camera was dropped, and it hit a blow from the top, what it did was it slightly compressed this plastic spacer. Not much, just a little bit. But when it did, the screws no longer were tight against the body anymore. In other words, if the, when the spacer was crushed, these screws all of a sudden were loose, all four of them. Because, uh, well, because. <laughs> anyway... So what happened is, is they started backing out and uh, two of these fell on the camera. And since I always check a camera, I checked this part first when I saw these two screws missing and the camera came from and locked up by the customer told me it was locked up. I knew immediately that uh, the cause was these two screws here. You're not quite, you know, not too often that lucky. Um, a camera can lock up because of a hundred different reasons. But um, if you look and you see screws missing, at least you know what's caused it, is two screws. So I started having to disassemble the camera and started um, hunting for those screws. And one of the screws was laying here in the bottom cover, in the tray. Uh, as long as the customer held the camera upright, that screw wasn't going to bother, bother anything. Of course, if they you know, tilted the camera or turned it upside down or something to take a picture or sideways, why, the screw would have worked its way back up into the camera. But uh, luckily for me, the first one was easy to find. So then I only had one screw to look for. 
they had locked up the camera, which simplified the matter uh, a lot. So I had to pull the mirror cage and uh, I looked on both sides and the bottom. You never know exactly where a camera locks up, but I was looking for that screw that was missing. I didn't find it in the uh, mirror cage. So um, then I grabbed the body, started looking around, and uh, I found the uh, screw that was locking up the camera right here. I couldn't get it out. It was stuck. Uh, possibly the customer advanced the camera and the mechanism there forced it in place. So instead of forcing it, which you don't want to do, I uh, loosened this screw and this screw and here. And those are the three screws that hold the shutter in place. So then it was, it had a little bit of play and movement and uh, the screws in here was loose and I easily lifted it out. And then I checked the camera to see if it was working properly. And uh, it seems like that uh, the screw had not damaged it in any way. I ran it through several speeds. So uh, we lucked out. If a customer, if a screw locks up a camera and a customer advances it um, with force, he can uh, damage the shutter or some other mechanism because the screw won't give, it's solid, and uh, something will be damaged, but I lucked out in this case. Now, finding a screw, there's not a whole lot of science to it, but um, at least I'll tell you what I know. When you're looking through a camera, a screw lodged into a camera quite often looks like it's part of the mechanism. So if a screw was stuck down in here somewhere and you saw it, um, you wouldn't think anything about it because it looks like, well, it's supposed to be there wherever. But uh, screws are different. These are probably brass. This one here looks like it's black. The, this one here is silver. Here's a Phillips straight edge. All different kinds of screws, brass, in a camera. And... Uh, to simplify looking for a screw, you need a sample. So what you do is um, you go back to your original. There's always four in there, and usually it's just one missing. So, and focus. My Sony camera macro lens quite often does this to me, it seems like. If there were a better focusing camera on the market, I'd probably buy it. I thought Sony was the best. But um, anyway, so can I get this out of here? Yeah, come on out. It's uh, being stubborn. They like to fall into the camera, but if you try to take them out, of course they're going to give you trouble so here we go we can see what kind of head it's got on it it's kind of rounded and uh, not quite in focus and it's a Phillips it gives you a clue as to what you're looking for so you can see now the relative size of the type screw you're looking for you can also see what kind of head it's got. The head is rather shiny, polished, and it's a Phillips. So looking down here at all these screws, you can tell immediately that none of them even come close to a match. So you need to look through the mirror cage and you need to look through other parts of the camera and you're looking for something like this. Now, I'm gonna put it back where I found it which was right there and it won't go in there now there we go 
and die. It's okay. It's not. There's no danger. It um, because it's loose, and I know where exactly where it's at. But that's how I kind of found it right there. I was lucky the um, screw was kind of sitting at an angle. And uh, it's very obvious to me that, that was it, that it wasn't, didn't match any of the others. So that's how you kind of look for a screw looking through a camera. And I have looked on, on past cameras up for an hour to find them. And it's very aggravating because you know it's there, but you uh, sometimes are looking right at it. You don't know that uh, that's it because uh, the camera, um, it's usually stuck. And if you shake the camera, it uh, will stay there. Sometimes you can even hit the camera lightly against the uh, tabletop and it still won't move. And uh, get my other one. My other one's, I've got two tweezers. One's magnetic and one's nearly not magnetic. Uh, it's uh, made of some metal that uh, does not magnify, or not magnify, does not magnetize very easily there we got it okay so um, i went ahead and pulled that out and the camera was fine okay you've learned that um, you want to watch those uh, flash attachments to make sure that um, when you buy one yours is not uh, the camera hasn't been dropped. I'm putting those back in because this will go in my parts bin. I may need those screws for another camera. Another knocker mat. So you know what to look for now. Immediately. You need to, when you look at the pictures, look for this. And then when you open the camera, look to see if any of the screws are missing. And if they are, then you know why the camera is locked up and you can go fishing for it. Okay, that's it. I spent a lot of time today. It took longer than I thought. It always does, it seems like. And the um, unit I'm returning to the customer will be this top cover here, which is not perfect. But uh, it's, it's better than the other one. And uh, the screws on the uh, top cover of uh, the one I'm replacing with, I've sealed them with contact cement. Nothing special, just make it sticky and put it on there. Even if the screws were to back out, they won't fall down because the sticky contact cement won't let them. But it's one thing I do on most cameras. If I think to do it, I'll always put uh, uh, some contact cement on these screws. Sometimes you'll get a camera and uh, even though they haven't fallen out, they're loose. So I always get a screwdriver and make sure they're all tight. And then I, I tack them with a little contact cement before I close the camera. Okay, that is it. Okay, finally I'll go off. Thanks for uh, dropping by the shop. Um, this has been a tutorial or a lesson. I normally don't do these. The only reason uh, I decided to do one this time was because the uh, I see this so often in uh, cameras. I have uh, since I started repairing cameras back in 78 where the uh, screw will drop out of the uh, flash shoe into the camera hundreds of them I've, I've worked on so uh, it's something to watch for um, don't buy a camera that uh, has been dropped on the top like that and the you can't fix the top cover you'll have to get a junker and replace it um, once you're inside the camera if you're working on a flash shoe or if you're working on a camera for any reason check the flash shoe screws uh, get a screwdriver cross point Make sure they're tight. Seal them. Um, if a screw is missing, you're going to have to go fishing. 
Hopefully it'll be near the top. I've had that happen. Uh, sometimes it's near the bottom. And sometimes if you're unlucky, you've got to pull the mirror cage and uh, go deep to find it. Once you do find it, don't force it if it's um, stuck in place. Loosen the parts around it and ease it out so as not to damage anything. And um, I guess that's pretty much it. Thanks for dropping by. Hope you enjoyed yourself. Later. <laughs>